Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Janome Skyline S5. In this video, we're going to talk about the touch panel and how to operate that and what, what all those little buttons mean. Okay, to start with, you have your LCD screen up here at the top, and it gives you information about uh, what stitch you're doing and information about that stitch. So right now we're in mode one. Uh, it says 01 is stitch number 01, and up here on mode 1 you can see there's the number for that straight stitch. When you turn on your machine, it will automatically wake up to straight stitching, a uh, kind of a middle of the road uh, stitch length, and middle needle position. So then we have uh, stitch, the Middle needle position is 4.5, and that's like half of nine because nine millimeters is how wide you can make your your decorative stitches or your zigzag stitches. So half of that is 4.5. 2.4 is a good um, garment stitch length. It's not too long, like a basting stitch. It's not too short. It's it's just about right. And then over here, it shows that we have the foot control connected. So right here is the mode key. Now the mode has to do with these modes. These groups of stitches that we have, a lot of lettering, uh, some utility stitches, and a lot of decorative stitches. So depending on what mode you're in, notice the numbers start with 01, again, at the beginning on all of them. So make sure you're in the correct mode. You just press this button to get to the next one. So now we're in mode two, here we're in mode three, here four, five, and six, and press it again and you get back to one. Now, if you were in, say, mode three, and you wanted to get right back to mode one again, you could press this button down here and it gets you right back in. Just make sure you're not doing any kind of program combination because that will erase all that. You just, um, just if you're trying to get back into mode one and not save anything, you're just fine. And here we have the cutter button for after you do a locking stitch. So let's say at, you wanted to do a locking stitch at the end of your seam. You stop at the end of your seam. You press this locking stitch button. It, as long as you have this on, see those little scissors up there? It will do the locking stitch. Keep your foot down on the pedal until it finishes doing the locking stitch, and then it will cut your threads and leave little short tails on the back of the fabric. It's a really useful uh, feature to have that. Also, any stitch that you have that has a locking stitch built in, say like your buttonholes have a locking stitch built in, if you have that on, it will also cut your threads and pull them to the back as long as that's on. Okay, I'm going to turn it off for now. And then, of course, we have stitch width or needle position. Now, in this case, when we're doing a straight stitch, it just moves the needle. So watch over here at the needle. See, I can touch that press and hold, and you can see that the needle just kind of moves, marches over to the right or to the left, depending on which way you're going. If I wanted to put it back in the center, I could just push this direct select button right there. Okay, stitch length. Of course, if you're basting, you probably want to have like a, the longest stitch you can. Uh, if you did a zigzag and you wanted it really close together, here's your zigzag button. You could have a very short zigzag, make a nice little satin stitch. Okay, then we have these arrow buttons. Now these arrow buttons are useful in the settings menu to make your choices, but they're also really good for if you are programming stitch combinations and you want to check what something looks like. Say you have a long word or name that you're spelling, you want to make sure you've spelled it correctly. It'll show you the letter up here in the screen as you move the cursor back and forth with these arrows. Then here you have your numbers. Now these numbers, all of the stitches up here are two digit uh, stitches and numbers. So for instance, if I wanted say, um, 45, I'd have to do 45, not just four, because that's not gonna give me anything. Let's, I'll show you an example. For instance, if I did eight, oh, here, there. See, it's blinking. The blinking means it's waiting for me to do the next digit, so 40. There we go, we're into that. So I'm gonna go back to this here. Okay, now, clear and memory. Those are, again, for your, um, 
your programming of your stitch combinations or your monogramming, your lettering, you would say if you had the wrong letter in there or you didn't have the enough of the right letters, you could go in and clear it and then use your cursor to put uh, the cursor where it wants to be, where it should be to put in the correct letter. Okay, over here we have the elongation button. Now this is for a certain group of stitches right here in mode one, 68 through 79. Those are satin stitches. And you can make them longer, but keep the same stitch density. I'll show you what that looks like right here. So here is the standard stitch length for say stitch number 70. And here it is twice as long. Three times as long, four times, and five times as long. It doesn't show that on the screen, but I'll show you what that if you were using that feature, what it would look like. We would go to elongation. There it is at the, just the regular stitch length, stitch pattern length. And if we push elongation again, now it would look like this. So it shows you up here on the screen if you've got that longer. And that can actually be a useful and beautiful effect when you have some of these other stitches like 79. It's really, really neat to see that uh, kind of stretched out, but the stitch density remains the same. Okay, then we have twin needle. Now twin needle sewing, you'd press this here. You'd put in your twin needle, which is in your needle set in your accessories. And you could use two different colors of thread and do beautiful stitches like this. Now, as long as you have pressed this, your machine is not gonna allow you to do too wide of a stitch. I'll give you an example. Okay, so, hear that little beep? We can't do a, a zigzag that's any wider than three millimeters. That protects your machine from the needle hitting the, either the foot or the needle plate on either side. That's what twin needle is. Now, when I go to turn it off, I go like this, and it gives me that blinking beep just to make sure that I have taken that twin needle out and put in a single needle. Push it again, and you're back in business. Okay, then we have the turnover key. Now, let's get into mode two, and let's say I have uh, one of these little cars that I'm doing, and I wanna do a line of cars along maybe the lower edge of a jacket for a little boy, okay? Well, if I'm stitching that, I want the cars to be right side up. So I want to have my body of my fabric over here, the body of the garment here, and the, the hemline right here. So I would turn this over. Now the baseline, that the, the road that the car is sitting on, is now on the other side. That's what this little turnover mirror key is. Okay, now this is your back to the beginning button. Right now, you really can't do anything with it because we don't have a, a pattern combination, but if you did have a pattern combination that you had done, and let's say you stitched it out on a piece of scrap fabric and you decided, oh, I don't like that thread, I'm gonna choose a different thread. You could push this and would go back to the beginning of your pattern combination. You could start that, um, pattern combination again. Okay, and then we have the lockout key, which is a really useful safety feature for when you are threading the needle or changing the needle. Because um, we know needles are sharp and we want to keep ourselves safe, so having the lockout is great. Just press it again to turn it off. And then down here, I already kind of referred to these. These are your direct select keys for these particular stitches. So your sewing machine is gonna wake up as your straight stitch. Uh, here you can press this one and it's, your needle has automatically gone to the left without you having to move it over using the stitch width keys. Over here, you've got your zigzag. Now the zigzag also can be made wider or narrower and uh, less dense or more dense. If you wanna go back to the default for that stitch, just press that again, there you go. Now, the M next to the zigzag means that when you narrow or widen the stitch, it does so from the center outward, from the middle outward, okay. 
up here on the stitch chart, you have, and, and that's stitch number 11, you stitch number 12, there's an R next to it. That means it stays the same on the right. And when you change it here, it narrows or widens towards the left, but it stay, remains the same on the right. Okay. All right. So here we have your standard square-ended buttonhole. This machine makes a beautiful buttonhole, no matter which buttonhole you use, but this is the, the basic standard that most people go for. And um, up here on the stitch chart, you can see there's uh, rounded-ended buttonholes, there's uh, keyhole buttonholes that you can choose from, uh, a various variety of different buttonholes that you can use. But if this is the one that you normally make, you've got it right there, just one button push, you don't have to hunt for anything. All righty. So now we're gonna get into the settings. When you push this, you have where you could change like the buzzer or the little beep, you can change it to be off. And in this case, it would not give that little beep every time you touch it, something. It does still give you the quick warning beep, like you can't do that, so it would give you that one there, but it wouldn't give you all the other little beeps that you uh, would get. I'm gonna leave it on, because I liked having it on, okay. Then you press the mode key to get to the next choice for setting. What this means here, since that's blinking, is as you're sewing and you're, you stop sewing, take your foot off the pedal, it'll stop with the needle up. If I went over here to needle down, it would roll to a stop with the needle down. You can still press the needle up, needle down key to get it to come up, or in the case of using the cutter button, you could do that and it will cut the thread and lift up the needle. So I kind of like to have mine down, I'm just gonna leave it there. Here we have the speed. Now this is your startup speed. So when you press on the pedal, it will gradually start up and then go up to full speed. Some people like to have that a little bit slower at the beginning. And for if you're new at sewing or you're just not used to this machine yet, it might be good to start it out at one. Some people are really confident. They just want to, you know, get going right now. And in certain stitching situations, that's what you might want to do. You can always go into settings and choose that. I kind of like it at two in the middle of the road. Um, your machine by default is set at one. And speaking of default, you can clear all of your settings back to factory default by pushing clear right down here, and that would clear them all. So now let's go to the next one, and this is touch screen calibration. Touch screen, the touch screen, you would use your uh, stylus, of course, to touch your touch screen. But let's say here you're gonna touch five and you had to kind of touch over here to get five to work. That means the touch screen is slightly out of calibration. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna walk through the steps that it takes to get your touch screen back in calibration. So first of all, open your manual, cause you'll need this, to page 26. And the first thing it says for you to do is press your start stop button right there. Now that gets it into the uh, different uh, steps that you need to do to uh, touch, uh, get your calibration back to in order. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna touch right down here at this corner like that. Now it says two, that means we're going on to the next thing. So the next one is here. So it says T1, T2, T2. That's gonna be right in the middle of six, right there. And try and touch it right in the middle, right where it says on the, the book. And T3 is gonna be right up here, like that. And then T4 is gonna be right in the middle of that back to the beginning button. T5 is right in the middle of two. And now it's back to the beginning. So this screen was in already pretty good shape. We didn't really need to do that, but I wanted to go through that just so that you would know how to calibrate your touch screen if you should ever need to. And then once you're done with settings, there you go. We can get right out of that. So you can change as many settings as you want or change just one and push uh, set and it's, it's done. 
So this is the basic operations of the touch panel. It's really useful. It's simple, but complicated enough to give you lots of options. Um, of course, your book is also going to help. But if you found this video to be helpful, please give us a thumbs up. And if you have questions or comments, you can leave them in the little area down below. We have a lot of other videos on this machine and on other machines that we have here at Montevilla. So keep watching, stay tuned. Happy sewing. We'll see you later. Bye.